Freezing experiments began in 1941, carried out by the Luftwaffe, to find ways to prevent and treat hypothermia among their soldiers, especially those serving on the Eastern Front. At Dachau and Auschwitz, prisoners, often captured Soviet troops, were used as test subjects. The goal was to understand how the body reacts to extreme cold and how best to revive someone after severe exposure. Sigmund Rascher and Ernst Holzlöhner led these trials. One method involved immersing prisoners in tanks of freezing water for up to three hours while wearing Nazi uniforms to test effectiveness against hypothermia. Others were forced to stand outside completely naked in sub-zero temperatures for many hours, sometimes as low as minus 6 degrees Celsius. The experiments often pushed subjects to the edge of life, with many not surviving. Researchers also compared different rewarming methods, like placing someone in boiling water. The experiments also aimed at finding whether certain groups, like Soviet prisoners, had greater natural resistance to cold. Holzwöhner was eventually captured by British forces. After interrogation, he reportedly took his own life, though his fate remains unclear. Altitude experiments. In early 1942, Sigmund Rascher led experiments at Dachau to study the effects of extreme high altitude conditions on the human body, meant to help German Luftwaffe pilots who might parachute without oxygen. Prisoners, mainly Poles and Russians, were locked in a low-pressure chamber that simulated heights of up to 68,000 feet. Many suffered severe decompression sickness, brain hemorrhaging or death. Some reports claimed that Russia even performed procedures on the brains of those who made it through the tests. He also deprived some subjects slowly of oxygen to test how long it took to suffocate. Himmler even ordered further testing to determine if the deceased test subjects could be brought back to life. Seawater experiments. In 1944, Hans Eppinger and Wilhelm Beigelberg led experiments at Dachau to test ways of making salt water drinkable, aiming to help Luftwaffe pilots or Navy sailors stranded at sea survive. Around 90 Roma prisoners were used in these trials. They were denied all food and fresh water and forced to live on nothing but seawater. The deprivation left them in severe distress. Witnesses reported that some were so desperate they licked recently clean floors or tried to get a few drops of moisture from dirty rags. Many were left in critical condition. Beigelberg was convicted at the Nuremberg trials, but he was released in 1951. In 1963, he was found dead in a stairwell. Eppinger took his life after the war to avoid testifying. The blood experiments. Sigmund Rascher carried out blood clotting experiments using a substance made from soluble beet and apple fibers called polygal. He believed it could help reduce bleeding during surgery or combat injuries benefiting Wehrmacht soldiers. To test this, prisoners were given polygal tablets and then deliberately wounded, either by being shot in the neck or chest, or by being cut without any pain relief. Russia later wrote about the benefits of polygal but left out that the trials were done on prisoners. He even set up a production company for it staffed by inmates. Meanwhile, Dr. Bruno Weber ran blood compatibility tests at Auschwitz. Prisoners were injected with mismatched blood types, triggering severe immune reactions, fevers and deaths. Weber died a free man. In April 1944, Sigmund Rascher and his wife were arrested after the Gestapo discovered they had faked their claims of miraculous fertility by kidnapping or purchasing babies to stage multiple pregnancies. Rascher was further accused of financial fraud, the murder of his former lab assistant and falsifying research. He was imprisoned in Buchenwald and later Dachau, where he was executed. Post-war, his experiments were condemned at the Nuremberg trials as criminal and inhumane. Twin experiments. From 1943 to 44, Josef Mengele led twin experiments at Auschwitz, trying to increase twin births among Germans and study heredity for Nazi racial goals. 
twins were seen as key to understanding the inheritance of genes and used to explore how bodies reacted under identical conditions. Mengele performed horrific things such as amputating healthy limbs, infecting children with diseases and attempting to change eye color through chemical injections. He reportedly also tried to surgically join them to mimic conjoined twins. Many of these children didn't survive. According to survivor accounts, Mengele also transfused blood between male and female twins and experimented on their reproductive organs to study gender traits. Mengele fled to Argentina after the war and evaded capture. He drowned in 1979 off the coast of Brazil. Chemical experiments from 1939 to 45, the Nazis conducted chemical experiments across several concentration camps. The purpose was to test chemical agents, poisons and treatments that could be used in warfare or on German soldiers. Mustard gas was used frequently on prisoners causing extreme blisters, blindness and cancers. Around 27,000 people were affected by these trials. Victims were also exposed to similar agents like lewisite to cause chemical burns, then tested with various ointments and treatments. Many developed severe infections or pneumonia leading to death. At Buchenwald, similar methods were used to study burns from phosphorus, a substance pulled from incendiary bombs. Phosphine gas experiments were also conducted at Natzweiler, where around 50 died in painful suffocation. Attempts were made to use the growth hormone eutropin to reduce its poisoning effects. Ludwig Werner Haas, one of Hitler's favorite physicians, ran trials using hyperchlorous acid-laced water, trying to help German soldiers poisoned with lewisite. Himmler approved testing on prisoners at Neuengamme camp. Further experiments included the use of tabin and sarin, nerve agents on prisoners to study their effects. At Buchenwald they also tested various poisons that were slipped into food. In some cases, prisoners were reportedly shot with toxic bullets or had poison applied directly to their skin. Disease experiments. Between 1942 and 45, Nazi doctors conducted numerous disease-related experiments on prisoners across several concentration camps. These tests aimed to develop and improve treatments and vaccines for German soldiers but were done without consent, with extreme cruelty and involved high death rates. Some were lured with promises of better treatment but most were forced. At Ravensbrück from 1942 to 43, researchers tested the effectiveness of sulfonamide, an early antibiotic. To simulate battlefield injuries, they deliberately infected wounds with bacteria like tetanus or streptococcus. At Buchenwald, over 1,000 inmates were used to test vaccines for typhus and scarlet fever. The program was led by Dr. Erwin Ding Schuler under the direction of Joachim Rogowski, who ran the Waffen SS Hygiene Institute. In Dachau, over 1,200 inmates were exposed to malaria by being placed in cages with infected mosquitoes. After falling ill, they were treated with experimental drugs. Hundreds died and many survivors were left with permanent damage. German pharmaceutical companies cooperated with the regime, hoping these breakthroughs could help on the battlefield. The scale of these trials was so large that SS officer Oswald Pohl protested to Himmler about the constant demand for more prisoners. These experiments were carried out under the justification of protecting the German military with no regard for the people being used. Transplantation experiments. Between 1942 and 43, Nazi physician Karl Gebhardt led transplantation experiments at Ravensbrück to study how bones, muscles and nerves regenerate and whether body parts could be moved from one person to another. Prisoners had tissues removed without pain relief and Gebhardt even tried to transplant limbs from victims to wounded German soldiers. Many subjects were left in severe pain, disabled or disfigured. Some were also injected with bacteria directly into their bone marrow to test experimental treatments for battlefield infections, often with fatal results. Gebhard was later tried at a Nuremberg doctor's trial. He showed no remorse and was sentenced to death by hanging. 
Sterilization experiments from 1941 to 45. Sterilization experiments were carried out in several camps as part of the Nazi plan to prevent reproduction among populations they deemed undesirable, mainly Jews and Roma. The aim was to develop quick and large-scale sterilization methods. Techniques included x-rays, surgery and chemical injections. Thousands were sterilized during these experiments. This came in addition to the Nazi regime's broader forced sterilization campaign which had already affected about 400,000 people. Radiation was later used as a preferred method due to efficiency. The procedure used not only caused infertility but also severe burns. Afterward, reproductive organs were removed surgically for examination. Doctors like Karl Klauberg and Horst Schumann led these trials. Schumann was tracked down in Ghana and brought to trial in West Germany in 1970. He admitted to large-scale crimes but was released in 1972 because of his poor health and died in 1983. Klauberg, on the other hand, was captured by Soviet forces, sentenced to 25 years and then released in a prisoner exchange in 1955. After returning to Germany and resuming his medical career, public pressure led to his re-arrest, but he died before trial. Experiments on Homosexuals In 1944, Danish doctor Karl Wernet carried out experiments at Buchenwald aiming to cure, in air quotes, homosexuality using hormone implants. He created a capsule that slowly released testosterone and had it surgically implanted under the skin of at least 10 male prisoners with the support of high-ranking Nazi officials like Himmler. Wernet claimed some of the trials were successful, though these claims likely came from prisoners who hoped cooperation would improve their chances of survival or release. The procedures led to at least two confirmed deaths. The theory that male hormones could, air quote, reverse homosexuality was later fully discredited. Castration was another widespread method used by the Nazis against men accused of homosexuality. It began under the label of voluntary procedures but later became forced in camps. The belief behind this was that reducing a man's physical drive could stop the spread of what Nazis falsely viewed as a contagious condition. Vernet was arrested after the war but fled to Argentina where he practiced medicine until his death. Head injury experiments In mid-1942, in Baranowice occupied Poland, Nazi doctors carried out head injury experiments in a secluded building behind the home of a security service officer. Though the exact medical goal was never clearly stated, it likely aimed to observe the effects of repeated brain trauma. Subjects were strapped tightly to a chair beneath a machine that repeatedly struck their heads with a mechanized hammer at timed intervals. The repeated impact caused severe neurological damage and the subjects eventually lost their sanity.